All right, so I was recently attacked on social media in quite a very large systematic way, multiple hundreds of comments, mainly on Facebook, mainly from people who aren't vegan. But this actually comes up a lot within the vegan movement. But the main school of thought within the vegan movement is the logical one, where that by you buy the product that you wish to support and they will supply the product on the other end. And, you know, if you demand meat, then you are demanding an animal be bred into existence and slaughtered for that meat. And if you demand tofu, then you're demanding plants be grown, tofu be harvested, tofu be made. And it doesn't matter the outlet that does that, you are still creating that supply and demand chain for whatever product you buy. There are some vegans and a lot of accusatory meat eaters who I don't believe are genuine, <laughs> but we'll talk about the genuine ones. There are some vegans who believe that if you buy from a non-vegan establishment, then you are supporting that establishment, therefore you support the bad things they do as well. And I'm here to tell you that that is a very futile way of thinking, that that is an impossible standard to meet. You cannot meet that standard consistently across the board as a vegan in a non-vegan world, and it doesn't make any sense either. So for the meat eaters who are not so genuine, <laughs> I think they were just looking for a gotcha because I'm in McDonald's buying the vegan burger, I'm in Burger King buying the vegan burger, and I'm in KFC also buying the vegan burger. I was being very consistent, and because I truly believe that this is one of the best ways to create change, the only way that we have true power, you can protest, you can lobby the government, but what are we supposed to do? The little vegans on the ground, the people who wanna make a difference where they can, well, we can choose the products that we want to see more of. Now, one of the main accusations from what I've seen in my Facebook comment section, which was like 200 of them, and I think what there was a bit of groupthink mentality and they're all jumping on board and seeing it and going, oh, we can get them on this, was that if I go into McDonald's, for example, and, it, and there's always like people, they want to vilify McDonald's because McDonald's has this bad track record and it's everywhere. And when they see McDonald's, it, it just goes off, especially in the vegan movement, it's McDonald's. When people go to Tesco's and Morrison's and Waitrose, the vegans will go and buy soy milk and oats from there. And they know, okay, if I buy soy milk from Tesco's, then I'm not supporting the bacon uh, aisle, which is you know not too far off from the plant-based aisle. They're selling chopped up bacon, chopped up uh, chicken bodies and all of that. And Tesco have contracts with factory farms and Waitrose have contracts with factory farms and so do Morrison's. Morrison's have their own slaughterhouses. Tesco's will only sell gas chambered pigs, you know, from CO2 gas chambers. But we understand that when we walk into that supermarket, if we buy the rice, we're demanding rice, they'll supply rice. If you buy the bacon, they'll supply murdered animals. But for some reason, when you walk into McDonald's, a different outlet, the law of supply and demand does not count. If you, if you walk into McDonald's, you're all of a sudden supporting slaughterhouses and factory farms, even if you buy the vegan option. Where is the logical consistency? But the accusation is that if you buy a vegan burger from McDonald's, they will use the profit, this is one of the main accusations, to go out and uh, exploit and kill animals with that money. Now, I'm gonna tell you why that is stupid. <laughs> it is a complete appeal to futility. And you cannot dictate what anyone does with their profit out of any business that you support. So you could get, example, a taxi, right? And I've got to go to the airport, I'm gonna go get a taxi, right? So the taxi driver rocks up, you've demanded a taxi. They've supplied a taxi. If everyone on my street demands a taxi, they'll supply more taxis. Everyone on the street is demanding a service, which is a taxi. What if you give the money to the taxi, they use their profit, because every business generates profit, they use some of that profit to go and buy uh, some horrible child paraphernalia or chopped up dead dogs from the underground black market dog bacon producer. Have you supported those things? Or has the taxi driver supported those things? You've demanded a taxi, you've paid for your taxi. You cannot dictate where someone's profit goes. That is, as I said before, a complete appeal to futility. You could pay for electricity and they could go off and do whatever they want with the profit. You cannot dictate that. So why would that even be in the conversation? Now, what you can dictate when you walk into these places, uh, McDonald's, for example, they get their burger patties from Beyond Meat. Now, what is the difference 
from you walking into Tesco, buying Beyond Meat from Tesco, or walking into McDonald's, which is another outlet, and like Tesco, also sell murdered animals, Tesco sells murdered animals too, but you go into a different outlet, which is called McDonald's, and you demand a Beyond Burger, and they go to their supplier, hey, we need some more Beyond Burgers. Their supplier, Beyond Meat, makes more Beyond Burgers, gives it to their, their outlet, which is McDonald's, and McDonald's sell it to me, and they get their profit, and what do they do with their profit? I don't know, they pay employees, they use it for their infrastructure, I don't know, it goes to the CEO, it goes wherever, wherever the profit goes. Every single business, knows exactly what products are moving out the door. They don't just lump all products together in one category and go, yeah, we've sold a thousand items. No, they go, we've sold 20 beef burgers, we've sold 10 chicken burgers, and we've sold 100 plant-based burgers today. Well, you know what? We can see that the plant-based burger is outperforming the other burgers. What do we do? I know what we'll do. We'll use the profit from the plant-based burger and buy more beef burgers. Said no one ever. Said no one who had any business sense whatsoever. What they do is if they see plant burgers running out the door, they go, let's make it a permanent menu item. Let's put on another one. Let's see how another one does. And you know what? The, the way that they're, the argument, the accusation that if you buy a vegan product from a non-vegan establishment, you're supporting their exploitation and killing of animals. The way that falls flat on its face is that if everyone, right, shifted their buying power into vegan burgers, everyone that went into that restaurant just bought vegan burgers. You know what they'd do? they'd turn into a vegan establishment, wouldn't they? They wouldn't go, oh, 100% of people are buying vegan burgers. No one's buying the meat. Let's use all the profit from the vegan burgers to buy more meat. That's stupid. It makes no sense. So the biggest point of power we have is to demand that these unethical businesses, which most of them are, supply vegan products. If you look at the outlet as secondary and you look at the factory farms and the slaughterhouses here and they go into the outlet and then you have plant farming here and they go into the outlet too to make the Beyond Burgers. When you move meat off the shelf, they will breed more animals into existence, torture them and slaughter them to put more meat on the shelf in that outlet. When you move Beyond Burgers off of their shelves, they see that there's a demand, they will supply Beyond Burgers through the supply chain, through that outlet to you. That's how it works. It's that simple. One of the funniest things about this argument is that you could actually make the argument for the opposite. You see, when Burger King brought out their 100% vegan restaurant or McDonald's brought out their McPlant burger, they actually used their profits to create these prototypes. They had food scientists create these vegan burgers, build the signs and infrastructure for the vegan 100% plant-based restaurant, all from their profits. So the argument works both ways. Demand dictates what they supply. Now, I don't know why this is so hard for people to understand. Appealing to futility changes nothing. Saying, oh, you know what, well, you pay taxes and you don't know where the taxes are going. Well, we can't dictate where the taxes go. You can with a vote, maybe, but you, you can't really. A lot of the taxes go to subsidized factory farms. We don't have any control of that. Now, one of the arguments might be subsidies. It might be Hey, well, you know what, Joey, that's all good and well, like supply and demand, yeah, but the meat and dairy industries will always be bailed out by the government. So supply and demand doesn't work at all. So the argument is that subsidies completely cancel out supply and demand. Now, I haven't seen any good evidence for that. There would be a limit to subsidies. They're not going to infinitely bail out bacon with all of the taxpayers' dollars. For infinitum, if there is no demand for bacon, that is not how it works. They will give them a certain number of subsidies. They, do, they give to all farming. They give to plant farming, they give to, to animal farming, dairy farming, they give subsidies, right? But they're not gonna infinitely bail out dairy if no one wants it. That's not how it works. Supply and demand matters as well. So yes, they will be, ba be, be getting bailed out to a certain degree, which is important to attack the subsidies, yes. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that supply and demand doesn't matter. And until they stop the subsidies, which we should put uh, a lot of energy into lobbying against those subsidies and re removing subsidies, I think that will help a hell of a lot. But until then, supply and demand is still a very, very powerful tool. If you're a vegan and you're saying supply and demand doesn't work, doesn't matter, why on earth are you vegan? Why don't you just eat the bacon? Because it doesn't matter. You're not, you're not contributing to the supply chain that kills the animals, are you? It's a ridiculous argument, and I think intuitively, as a vegan, if you believe that, you would know that that's ridiculous. Of course you wouldn't support the bacon industry. It's it, literally impossible to be consistent with the idea that we should only support 100%
vegan businesses and it's always narrowed down to food. Now I've got friends with 100% vegan businesses. I would love to support only 100% vegan, vegan businesses. In order for us to create real change, we need to change the animal abusing businesses as well. On every single corner, there's a Subway and a McDonald's and a Burger King. Down every single highway I drive, there's a truck stop with a Burger King and a Subway and a McDonald's. Now the fact that they have vegan options there means that I can go in there and I can make a choice via supply and demand to say, hey, I demand you give me a Beyond Burger, thank you. Go into Subway, I demand you give me the plant patty. You know what, Subway used to have plant-based meatballs. They've taken them off. And why did they take them off? Because the next production cycle came around and they hadn't sold enough meatless meatballs. Because supply and demand matters. Because if you stop demanding Subway sell meatless meatballs, they will take it off the menu just like that. And they will only supply the meat meatballs from the slaughtered animals. Now, there is another element to this supply and demand thing called choice architecture. If on the supply end, you offer vegan options, then you will actually be able to see the demand. Now, there's been studies that show, there was a faunalytics study here, I'm going to bring it up. Researchers found that increasing vegetarian meal availability from 25% to 50% resulted in a 62% increase in sales uh, in, in a do dining hall. They had dining hall A and dining hall B, and by 79% in dino, dining hall B. When 50% of the meals were vegetarian, 40% of diners in A and 33% in hall B chose to forego meat. Wow. So choice architecture. It shows that when you offer more vegan options, people are more likely to choose them. Okay, so it's very important that we at least promote them. If people don't want to walk into McDonald's or walk into a certain place, like, I mean, there were vegans who were boycotting Morrison's after one of their pig farms was exposed. I think it's illogical, but if they emotionally don't want to walk into Morrison's, no problems. If you don't want to walk into McDonald's, no problems. But what I do have a problem with is you saying that it's unethical to, and then walking into Tesco or walking into Starbucks and grabbing a, a soy latte, which I do all the time, or walking into your local deli and buying bread, right? knowing that the deli sells dairy, if you're going to be that inconsistent and then tell people not to go into McDonald's to buy the Beyond Burger, then I have a problem. You're actually being a little bit illogical, irrational, and emotional, and not trying to do what is best for the animals, I believe. Now, I'm not accusing people of deliberately or with any malice doing this, but I think that it's very important to be logically consistent and sometimes you've got to put your emotions aside. Now, for me to go into KFC, an animal rights activist, and I've been into factory farms watching chickens die on their faces, all right? I see it all the time. Horrible chicken farming in the UK, disgusting all across the world. Chicken farming is one of the worst. For me to walk into KFC and buy their vegan burger and make videos about it and copying all this heat, I obviously believe in what I'm saying. I walk into Tesco's and I buy their plant-based meat. I walk into the service station and I buy a little plant-based uh, power bar or whatever. And I will walk into KFC and buy their vegan burger as well. Because what am I demanding? Here we go. It's corn. So corn supply KFC with their patties. Do you ever go into the supermarket as a vegan and buy vegan corn? Well, if you do, and you're against going into KFC to buy the corn, do you know that corn is not even a vegan company? Corn is a vegetarian company, and they support the egg industry, okay? And I think maybe the dairy industry, but I know definitely the egg industry, which exploit, kill, violate the rights of hens. I still buy the vegan options from corn. If you buy the vegan options from corn, or Linda McCartney's, all right, who are a vegetarian company as well, who support the violation of the rights of animals, but you won't walk into McDonald's, then you have a massive double standard there and you won't explain why. I understand that buying the vegan options from Linda McCartney's puts into supply vegan ingredients through the vegan supply chain. And I understand buying the vegetarian option from Linda McCartney's breeds hens into existence, exploits them and kills them and macerates male chicks or gasses male chicks. So I don't demand the vegetarian option from Linda McCartney's because Linda McCartney's to me is just an outlet for ingredients down a supply chain. Now we've seen a massive shift through supply and demand. Look what Veganuary has done across the UK and that's increasing the demand for vegan options. And now you can through choice architecture have more supply on the supply end, KFC, McDonald's, Burger King. Supply doesn't dictate demand. Demand dictates supply. But when you have options, you can actually encourage the demand a bit. So with Veganuary, we've seen a massive rise of plant-based consumerism. We've seen it all across the UK, a massive shift. And you see all these massive companies, these meat companies like JBS, which is a massive meat company, are responding to demand. 
uh, increasing plant-based products. Uh, JBS also bought Vivera. Uh, Pilgrims is another one. Massive animal exploiters buying plant-based uh, companies and shifting to plant-based food because even they see the demand, they, even they recognize the demand. Isn't it better to encourage these massive animal exploiters to shift across to plant-based products? Because we want them to change just like we want the person on the street to change. We want these big companies to change. And if their only incentive is money, we know their only incentive is money. It doesn't matter if they're cutting up plants or cutting up animals to these people. Furthermore, there are many examples of industries just dying out through lack of demand and, you know, technology advancing and just like horse and cart and you got manual labor ab agriculture, which have been replaced by tractors and combine harvesters. And then, you know, online shopping, you don't see people walking into the stores as often anymore because we have online shopping now. A good example is actually uh, Netflix and, you know, it sort of muscling out. DVDs and videos and blockbuster, you know. And so supply and demand dictates the market all the time. And the industry are terrified of it. The industry are so terrified of supply and demand that they try to stop plant-based companies from using meat language like vegan bacon or milk or cheese. In Turkey, they banned vegan cheese from being sold. In France, you see them passing laws and all of these uh, different countries passing laws against using meat language. Can't even call it oat milk. What? Oat drink, you're so scared. The dairy industry and the meat industry, the egg industry, they're so terrified, right, of supply and demand that people are actually going to demand plant-based foods. And with the choice architecture, they're afraid of that because they think, oh God, like they might not want to be cruel to the animals and they might want a bacon substitute. So we can't let them use our names. We're terrified. They're, they're terrified of the free market. If the meat industry are terrified of it, then it's gotta be a good thing. So this video for me was long overdue. I just thought I would uh, explain my position on supply and demand a little further. I'm not a shill for these companies. I actually believe that I'm doing the most logical, rational thing. And as an advocate, as someone who's in the public eye, I promote these options to people because they're incredibly convenient. Because one of the biggest arguments for people to support the meat industry is that it's just too inconvenient not to. I believe that supply and demand is a powerful force. Subsidies don't completely cancel out supply and demand. I haven't seen evidence of that. And look, if you're in the camp of vegans who don't emotionally wanna walk into these places, that's fine. If you're in the camp of, hey, I wanna support 100% vegan businesses, if you can, I think it's an incredibly high standard for your average person to meet. We don't have a 100% vegan place near us. We have to drive 25 minutes to get to one. We don't have a 100% vegan supermarket. I don't have a 100% vegan petrol station and a 100% vegan Uber driver and a 100% vegan landlord, okay? So I just think it's an incredibly difficult standard, impossible standard to reach. You cannot be consistent with it. But if you want to support 100% vegan restaurants, just one type of business, which is a food place, go ahead. But when you walk into any other business and they're not 100% vegan, you realize you've just picked and choosed which places you wanna support that are 100% vegan. Do I support 100% vegan restaurants? 100 billion, trillion, mazillion, gazillion percent, I do. I support sanctuaries too. Now some sanctuaries have a cafe. It'd be great if you had a sanctuary with a, with a vegan cafe that you could just go in and support them every single day and buy all of your utilities from the sanctuary. Wouldn't that be a perfect world? But it just so happens that the companies with the largest marketing reach, biggest advertising potential, the most restaurants, consistent across the country and who have the biggest budgets to spend in their food labs creating these products are these major food chains. So I hope I've helped you understand my position. Thank you for watching. Um, please leave your comments down below. Did I miss anything? Did I get anything wrong? Do you have an opinion on this? And yeah, let's see if we can create some healthy discussion in the comments section. But please be vegan, be consistent. You know, don't be unreasonable. Just buy the vegan options. Don't worry too much about who the outlet is. Let's try to create a plant-based supply chain and leave the horrible, abusive, cruel supply chain as a thing of the past. Peace.